Hello there, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Pegasus 22, which is a Genesis Atomizer, and I received this from www.unicornmod.com. Before I start, though, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of the product remains true on its network, as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so here I have the Pegasus 22 Genesis Atomizer, and if you get one of these, they also include a stainless steel mouthpiece and some spare parts such as O-rings and screws. Right, so the Pegasus 22 is made out of 316L grade stainless steel. It's 22 millimeters in diameter, and from the very top edge there to the bottom edge there, I measure at around 48 millimeters in length. In terms of build quality, no complaints. It really is a very nicely made atomizer. Got a good weight to it as well, and all the parts are sort of quite thick and chunky. It just feels like an atomizer that's sort of built to last. Aesthetically, again, a nice looking atomizer, but has to be said, it does look very, very similar to the Rocket from Rocket Science Mods. On the base, you're going to find a 510 threaded connection, and in the middle, it has a non adjustable naval brass center pin. It does have a fair amount of engraving, but obviously just bear in mind that uh, this is an atomizer, so once it's attached onto your mod, you're not going to see any of this anyway if you don't like the engravings. But at the top, it says Pegasus 22. You have a couple of decorative stars, and at the bottom, it says Unicorn Mod. And for those who like their serial numbers, you'll also find your serial number here as well. The tank is made out of Pyrex and holds around 3 millilitres of e-liquid. And it's a really thick tank as well, so it should be nice and strong. And as it is made out of Pyrex, it means you can put any e-liquid in there and it should be perfectly fine. As an optional extra, they do also have a metal tank. And if you take a look at the shot here, you can see just how nice and thick and chunky these parts are. The top cap has a 1.2 millimeter air hole, so it's not an overly tight draw, but it's definitely not a loose draw either. There are four grooves uh, going around the outside, and on top, space for a 510 drip tip. And like I said, it does come included with a stainless steel drip tip or mouthpiece, whatever you want to call it, and that fits in there lovely. And all the drip tips that I've tried fit in there nice and snugly too. With the top cap removed, you have a reduced chamber, which I know a lot of people like, and once again, you can just see how thick and sturdy these parts are. Going around the outside of the atomizer deck, you have this slight lip, so that should be good for trapping in the XSC liquid. Your positive connection is a simple naval brass thumb screw, and your negative terminals are flat-headed screws. You do have two wick holes, which are each 2.5 millimeters in diameter, so this means you can have a single coil setup, or a dual coil setup, or a U-wick, for example. And of course, you have a fill hole. Now, if you do normally prefer a dual coil setup, they do sell this uh, optional extra dual coil top cap, which has the two air holes rather than one. Now, the air holes are slightly smaller. These are 0.8 millimeters in diameter, but you do still have the uh, reduced chamber, obviously slightly larger though to accommodate two wicks. One thing worth mentioning though is that the air holes, in my opinion, are spaced too far apart. If you take a look at the atomizer deck, you can see that the wick holes are relatively close together. Now take a look at the distance between each of those air holes. You can see there's quite a big old space between them. So what this ultimately means is that when you go to line up the uh, air holes in front of the coils, one will be in front of the coil, but the other one will be offset by probably a good three or four millimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through how I've been mainly setting up the Pegasus 22, and that's been with the stainless steel mesh. So the mesh I'm using is 400, it's cut at a length of 30 millimeters by a width of 25 millimeters, and then rolled it up to form a tube and oxidized it by holding it in a hot flame. And for my wire, I'm using some 0.32 millimeter cantal. And as you can see, I've already pre-wound sort of five coils around the wick. And in case you're wondering, the syringe down the center there is to uh, simply help strengthen it up. All right, so as you can see, I've just inserted the wick through one of the wick holes loosened off the uh, negative terminal there and the positive terminal. And all I'm gonna do is trap the wire underneath the negative, tighten that one up, and then do the same thing for the positive.
once they're tightened up, you can just take your screwdriver out and tidy up the coils if need be. And then if you get any hot spots, if you just keep uh, pulsing the switch, eventually they should go. And this doesn't look to be too bad at all. And then once you know everything's all firing up correctly, you can take your bottle of e-liquid and fill the tank up. Give that a couple of seconds. Do a quick test fire, we should get some vapor. And then to finish off, just need to attach the top cap. And like always, just make sure you line the air hole up directly in front of the wick to obviously give you the best performance. Okay, so that was the Pegasus 22. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the Pegasus 22, and what I'll do now is go ahead and show you an action. So I'm gonna be using it on my Super T workhorse. It's the 18500 version. The battery has just come off the charger, so it should be reading around 4.2 volts. The resistance of the cord is reading 0.9 ohms, and I've got the tank filled up with some uh, DIY candy floss flavored e-liquid. It should be roughly 18 milligram strength, and it's a 70-30 mix of PG and VG. Okay, so this is the Pegasus 22. Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting plenty of vapour, but like I always say, just bear in mind that the amount of vapour you're going to get will come down to your personal setup with regards to the resistance of the coil, the amount of volts or watts you're, watts you're pushing through the coil, get my teeth in, it's going to come down to the type of e-liquid you're using. All those things will play a big part in our vapour production, but nevertheless, for the setup I've got here, getting plenty of vapour. Now the... Um, the drawer, it's a 1.2 millimeter air hole, so it's not particularly a tight drawer, but it's not particularly a loose drawer either. I'd say it's sort of pretty much right bang there in the middle. It's a relatively airy drawer, but with a nice bit of resistance, if that makes any sort of sense. The temperature is a nice, really warm vape, just how I like it personally. Uh, it will obviously, again, come down to your personal setup. If you have a higher resistance coil in there, the coil's going to run a little bit cooler. If you have a lower resistance coil, it's going to run a little bit hotter. So again, that will affect the uh, temperature of the vapour. But with this setup, just a nice warm vape. Flavour wise, plenty of flavour, but I get plenty of flavour out of any Genesis atomizer, and I personally find that as long as it's set up correctly, you haven't got any sort of hot spots, you know, you're not running the voltage too high for the resistance of the coil, all those sort of things, then as long as uh, everything's set up nicely, it should give you plenty of flavour and plenty of vapour. And this is no exception, just getting a tons of flavour out of it. Um, with regards to the setup now, normally, well, I say normally, but um, I used to always insert the wick first, then wrap my coils around the wick, and then obviously connect it up to the, uh, the terminals. But now I much prefer to just sort of wrap my coils around the wick first, drop it through the hole, and then just attach the terminals afterwards. And for me, it just seems to be a lot less hassle. I seem to have uh, far less problems with things like hotspots doing it that way as well. I'm not too sure why, but uh, for whatever reason, it seems to work nicely for me. So if you do it like that, or whatever method you tend to prefer, then um, I think it's a pretty easy one to get going, really. Yes, you will still have to do the old uh, uh, pulse in the switch. You might still have to give the coils a little bit of a nudge, but um, other than that, it's uh, nice and straightforward, really. You've got quite a bit of room to manoeuvre, so to speak. It's nothing sort of too overly fiddly. You've got the flathead screw for the negative. Most households have got a, uh, a flathead screwdriver and just a simple thumb screw for the, uh, the positive. So for me, you know, it's a nice, easy one to get going. The um, 
build quality, I've got no complaints. It's a really nicely made atomizer. It's got a really good weight to it as well. It feels like you're holding a nice sort of quality item. All the parts are really sort of quite thick and chunky. And I feel, even though it is a sort of Pyrex glass tank, you know, if I drop this on the floor, I'm not going to do it now, but if I did, then I feel quite confident it's not going to sort of smash the smithereens because even the, uh, the, the Pyrex tank is probably a good sort of, I'd say the wall is probably a good sort of three, yeah, around sort of three millimetres thick. So it's not like a little th thin, flimsy tank. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a nice little big, thick, sturdy tank. So the whole thing about it just sort of, you know, just does seem like a very good quality item. One thing that did... Uh, Puzzle me though, and um, it's the optional extra which they did also include, and that's the uh, the dual coil top cap because the two wick holes are quite close together, but the two holes on the top cap are really far apart. So what it means is that when you put a top cap on, you can always get one air hole up, uh, lined up in front of the coil, but the other coil, the air hole is going to be probably about three or four millimeters away from it. And ideally, you always want to have the air holes directly in front of the coils at all time to give you the most. Uh, amount of sort of vapour and flavour etc but um, you know whether I got a bit of a duff one maybe there's a little bit of a mistake or maybe they're all like that I'm not too sure but the one that I got definitely seems a little bit odd um, obviously that is an optional extra though it doesn't come as standard with the atomizer and as standard the atomizer that I've got you know I've got no complaints at all about the build quality but the uh, the optional extra dual coil top cap um, you know is a little bit odd um, aesthetics it's a nice looking atomizer, no doubt about it. It looks great on your sort of 22 mil mechanical mods. Uh, it has to be said though, you know, if you have a quick glance at it, you would think it was a rocket. Now, when they first contacted me about review, they sent me a picture and um, I hadn't, I've never used a rocket, I've never owned a rocket. And obviously I have seen a rocket before, but it just didn't sort of trigger any sort of memory. So I said, yeah, and no, I'll review that. And then I got it and I was using it and I was posting photos and uh, then somebody said oh, it looks quite like a rocket and I started noticing more and more people were saying that this particular atomizer looked like the rocket as well. So I thought let's go and have a look at the rocket just to remind me. And you know it does look very very similar. The, uh, the outside aesthetics and the sort of atomizer deck again looks quite similar as well. I think there's enough about it though to make it a a separate sort of entity, so to speak. It's not like a, a copy of the uh, of the rocket, but I think it's fair to say the design is uh, certainly inspired by the rocket. Let's put it that way. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention is that I think it's a handmade atomizer. I'm not too sure whether every single little tiny part is handmade but uh, I'm going to imagine the uh, the majority like the the actual sort of main atomizer section top cap etc is handmade but uh, I do want to stress I'm not 100% certain about that and the reason why I say I think it's handmade is because when I checked the uh, website this morning they do mention quite regularly the word artisan which uh, as far as I'm aware means a craftsman who makes things with their hands so if they're saying it's an artisan uh, atomizer then to me that means it's been handmade and if it is handmade then I think that you know, really goes to the uh, the quality of the atomizer as well. Regardless of whether it's handmade or CNC, you know, it's still a really good quality atomizer. But if it is a handmade atomizer, then uh, you know, even more impressive, really. Um, not really too sure what else I can tell you about it. You know, it's just a very nice atomizer. Um, it looks good, quite obviously quite similar to the rocket. The build quality is really nice, feels like a very good sort of quality item, got quite a heavy weight to it, and it looks great with just about any sort of a 22 mil mechanical mod, and it vapes an absolute treat as well. So, um, you know, if you do fancy trying these out for yourself, go along to www.unicornmod.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.